Hi everyone, welcome to Urban Outdoor Adventures. I'm up here with my friends, the twins here. We're fishing for carp on Catawanuka Lake. We're gonna show you some very exciting European carp fishing techniques. We're gonna be camping out tonight, so uh, stay tuned. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this one. Urban Outdoor Adventures. Teaching anglers and outdoor enthusiasts when, where, and how. Urban Outdoor Adventures, sponsored by Prince Craft Boats. The more you know, the better we look. Rapala, crafted from experience. Columbia Sportswear, avoid road rage, stay out of cars. Hi everyone, welcome to Urban Outdoor Adventures. I'm up here with my good friends, Lise, Laura. Laura. Laura and Lisa, as you can see, they're twins. It gets a little confusing for me. I've actually got them wearing different colored hats and I still screwed it up. But uh, we're up here on Catawanuka Lake and we're gonna be fishing European style for carp. Trevor, the resort owner, was kind enough to let us set our tents up here so that we can do some night fishing tonight. Even with the pod and the bite alarms, you wanna be near the rod, so if you're gonna be staying out at night, make sure you stay close. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. It's gonna be a great show. This week on Urban Outdoor Adventures, Sean, Lisa and Laura head to Ketchewanuka Lake for some late summer carp fishing. Sean and the girls booked into a resort located at the northeast end of the lake, adjacent to Young's Point on Highway 28. Ketchewanuka Lake is part of the Kawartha chain of lakes on the Trent Severin Waterway. This area is part of Peterborough County in Ontario. Ketchewanuka Lake is a 1 hour and 45 minute drive from Toronto, 2 hours and 15 minutes from Kingston and only 20 minutes from Peterborough. Young's Point offers a convenient general store, carrying everything from beverages to fishing licenses. Adjacent to the locks, you'll find specialty stores that the ladies may just want to browse or shop in for hours. The particular resort that Sean chose for this trip specifically caters to carp anglers. The popularity of carp fishing in Canada has only recently begun to increase. However, in Europe, the story is quite different. Billions of dollars are spent annually on carp fishing and related products. In addition to their regular Canadian guests, the resort owners Trevor and Judith Holloway accommodate numerous British and European anglers each year. The resort offers everything one might need for a fun trip with family or friends, including rental boats, comfortable self-catering cabins, and pre-baited swims. If self-catering is not your cup of tea, Judith can arrange to prepare some of her delicious home-cooked meals for you in the main dining room. Get up to the Kawarthas for some explosive trophy carp fishing. You may just land that next 40-pounder. This week's target species is common carp. Other popular sport fish species available, mirror carp, walleye, muskie, and panfish. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. There we go there. Come on, Laura. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you the rod. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna, yeah, he's on pretty good. Feels okay. like a nice fish. Okay, so remember, two, two fingers. fingers in front. Okay. And on my hip? Oh, keep it tight though. Okay. And you can't give the fish any slack. Okay. So. All right. So just what you want to do is just reel down. So you've got to bend in the rod. Always keep a bend. Okay. Yeah. And then just pull up with the rod. Don't use the reel to fight the fish. Use the rod and then sort of play it that way. You're doing good. You got it. <laughs> How's he feel? Pretty heavy? He's very heavy. See, he's waking up now. He's heavy. We've got this big net here looks like a huge butterfly net but when you're fishing from shore like this especially when you f there's another fish <laughs> oh he's off okay before i was rudely interrupted there we had another fish on it got off these big nets are very handy especially if you're fishing by yourself you can just lay them down in the water it's actually got a float on it and if you're here by yourself you can lead the fish right into the net Oh, hang on, he's not ready yet. 
I gotta wait till his head turns. Whoa. There he goes. Look at that go. He's fighting. They got power, eh? They certainly do. So when your friends see you now fighting <laughs> one of these on camera on a beautiful well, day like this. I'm tough. Yeah, and they'll see exactly what a great uh, opponent these fish can be for you. you. Just bring his head up. There you go. We got him. We got him. Well, I got to tell you, you did a great job. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on your first carp. I mean, that's a beautiful... Now, how much would he weigh? I know, he's probably a good 17 pounds. There we go. I hope it's going to show uh, Lisa up on the bank there. You're next. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Yeah? All right. So we'll just drop the net here. As you see, we didn't even really need to take this fish out of the water. She's ready to go. And we'll just let him swim away like that. Look at that. Slimy. Very right. slimy. Next one, I'm going to get you to kiss. Oh, uh, excellent. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Might be better than some of the guys yeah. I've kissed. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't imagine doing that, like, with a 40-pound fish. Wow. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> my arm muscles are going to be sore for sure. <laughs> oh, it was fun. Okay, Lisa, you're up. All right. We've got a channel coming through here. What we've done is we've gone out early this morning, put lots of uh, maize out, which is basically cattle corn, and uh, the fish have moved in to start to feed on it. We fired a few of those boilies out that we're using as hook baits, and uh, that, with combination with the mix, just seems to be working very well. You're doing a great job. Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay, yep, just keep the rod up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna walk out a little bit here. Let's say, just be careful. Oh, he's not ready yet. There we go. We got him. We just let him go in the net. And with these carp nets, you don't want to be picking them straight up in the air like that because you're just going to break them off. The way they're designed is you have a handle here, put your finger in there, and uh, there's actually handles right on the back of the net here. And what that allows you to do is to pick the fish up like this and cradle it, and then we're going to carry it over here and unhook it. We'll get this fish back in the water. That fish will probably go 20 pounds. Yeah. All right, it's your turn to get slimed. All right. Good job. You did a great job fighting that fish. I tell you, it's non-stop action here today. The girls actually went off to get changed. We were expecting rain today, and uh, it's actually turned out to be a beautiful, warm, late summer day, and the fish are biting. It's a lot of fun, and unfortunately, they're going to miss out on this one. I mean, with the scenery around us and the beautiful crystal clear water here, where you'd think we were uh, 500 miles north, we're actually only an hour and 15 minutes from Pickering, about an hour and a half from downtown Toronto. Let's get her back in the water here. Whoa, there she goes. I tell you, let these guys go. They're a lot of fun. Get up here in the Coatas, only an hour and a half from Toronto. Here's the girls. You just uh, missed a fish. Oh. I see you look a uh, little more summery now, eh? That's nice weather for September. Look at these pink uh, <laughs> pink skirt shorts things, whatever they are. Well, that's now, perfect for fishing. It's another fish about the same size. Urban Outdoor Adventures. Teaching anglers and outdoor enthusiasts when, where, and how. Hosted by Sean Ricard. If you're out at night, these little headlamps are just priceless little toy. I just put some new batteries in this one. And uh, great, you can direct them and use them wherever you're working. And it's hands-free. You don't have to be holding the flashlight. Great little tool if you're going to be out here at night or camping and so on. Another thing I want to suggest here is if you're using alkaline or regular batteries, maybe try rechargeable batteries. Over the lifespan of two of these, you're probably going to throw away 50 to 100 alkaline batteries. They end up in landfills, terrible for the environment. Think along the lines of rechargeable batteries. They're better for the environment and cheaper on your pocketbook. Fish it, huh? All right. Okay, Laura, you're up. <laughs> Just keep going off, eh? <laughs> okay. 
So you remember how you did it the last time? I will try. You're a pro now, eh? Yes. We're going to be staying on the bank tonight to do a little night fishing. We're going to stay in the tents because we want to be close to the pod. We don't want to be too far away from the rods. Uh, you want to be able to get on the fish as soon as they take off. Maybe we'll get a picture of this fish. Frame it and put it on the wall. Yeah. Well, actually, we have uh, on, our, on our website, on our message board, we have a, what we call the CPR gallery, catch photo release gallery. And um, we actually run a contest on there. And at the end of the season, we give away prizes for uh, three nice little cameras that you can win. Beautiful thing about digital photography is I find the quality to be absolutely amazing. It's pretty much foolproof as far as focusing and so on with a lot of the new cameras and the quality is just incredible. You can clean your pictures right up on your computer. You can go online and post them up on the uh, message board. There he is. Oh, yeah, that's a nice fish. It's a big one. Yeah. You did a great job. You've done this before. I think you lied to I'm me. I'm a pro. Oh, wow, look at the size of that fish. Oh, okay, let's not bully him. Beautiful fish. Okay, we got him. We got him. There we go. You really don't want to be uh, netting these fish before they're ready. But we, were, we saw the size of this thing. We didn't want to get it away, so I kind of stepped out. Wait till you see the size of this thing. Oh it's just absolutely enormous. Yeah. If I can get you to hold the net. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the size of that. I mean, what, what could be more fun than catching fish like that at the end of the summer in the Coata Lakes? We're about an hour and 15 minutes from Toronto. We're up here at a resort that specializes in carp fishing. And uh, Trevor was kind enough to go out and chum for these things. And it looks like it paid off for us this morning. We're actually going to get a weight on that fish. And uh, we're also going to get a picture of you holding that. That's a fantastic looking fish. That's a great fish. Congratulations. Good job, Laura. That fish is high 20s, maybe, maybe touching 30 pounds there. You ever caught anything like that? No, no? I haven't. <laughs> Are you in shock? <laughs> yes, it's no, it's, uh, it was much harder to pull in than the other one. All right, let me get... I knew it would be heavier. I'll get the hook out now, actually. Perfect. And that, I mean, look at the size of this fish, and then look at the size of that hook. That's all you need with these carp. So the largest one that's been tight. caught in this water is around 40 pounds? 41 pounds, yep. You can see these larger fish are a lot cleaner than the smaller ones. They get caught a lot less, a little bit smarter. Okay, the scale there. The reason we use this waist sling is that you don't want to be sticking this hook into the carp's mouth. You know, I say it every time we do a carp show, but I can't say it enough that... Okay, there we go. Between 29, 12 and 30 pounds even. All right, we'll get a quick picture. I'm going to leave it in this sack. It's nice and wet, and uh, we'll get a picture of this fish. CPR, brought to you by Nikon Digital Cameras. He is very heavy. Yeah. Can you got his mouth? Okay, hold him yep. up. Okay, okay, perfect. All right, there's fish jumping everywhere here. Smile. Perfect, one more. Okay, let's get him back in the water. Good job. Thank you. That's amazing. You're the first person I've taken out who's never fished for carp before and ended up getting a 30 pounder. <laughs> Just look at this, she's got slime on her shirt to prove it. <laughs> All right, look at the thickness of this fish here. I want to let Steve come in here close to get a shot of the back of this fish. Look how thick that is. Put your hand across the back of that fish just to see. I think because it's 30 pounds, you got to give this fish a kiss. Oh, yes. There you go. <laughs> Slime on the lips. Perfect. Okay. And there she goes. All right. Cool. Fabulous. How did that you. feel? Incredible! You did a great job, I gotta tell you. I mean, fighting those fish is not easy. There's a lot of weight there. Well, excellent. We gotta get a 40 now. The challenge is on. That's right. It's time now for the Angler's View, brought to you by Pure Energy Rechargeable Batteries. Laura's 30 pound carp was cruising the edge of a navigation channel. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. The water in the channel was 12 to 14 feet in depth 
spanning approximately 40 feet across. The edges of the channel consisted of boulders that were placed to act as a retaining wall to prevent the structure from failing. Sean set up his rods on a point, allowing him to strategically place his baits in various locations along the channel. Carp were relating to this area, treating it somewhat like a submerged highway as they cruised up and down, vacuuming up the free offerings of maize, boilies and trout pellets. The strike zone was a 100 foot stretch of channel. Using the red marker as a reference point, Sean cast to the following areas. Rod 1 to the far side of the channel, Rod 2 in the center, and Rod 3 was cast to the inside edge of the channel. This strategy allowed the entire span of the carp highway to be covered. Laura's fish inhaled a tutti frutti flavored boilie, fished on a 10 inch hair rig below a 2 ounce method feeder. Ground baiting is key to keep the carp feeding in an area. Trevor headed out in his boat early that morning and threw out a good quantity of bait. It wasn't long before the carp moved in and began to feed. In addition to ground baiting, Sean used his catapult throughout the day to fire out particle baits, such as boilies and canned corn. As you catch fish throughout the day, throw out additional offerings. If the fishing slows down, try dipping your particle baits in flavorings. It can really pay off. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. Hookmorefish.com, your one-stop fishing and outdoors resource. High quality videos, contests, interactive forums and much more. Let Sean Ricard teach you when, where and how. Log on to www.hookmorefish.com today. We have a 36 volt system on our boat here, which means we have three batteries that need to be charged. To charge those individually is going to be a big pain in the behind for you. What we have here is an onboard charger, 30 amp system. We have ours mounted under the deck here. What it allows you to do is connect all batteries up to the one charger. You can use a flush mount receptacle, which you can mount anywhere in the boat, it allows you to put an extension cord right into the boat, charge your batteries overnight while you're sleeping. Get yourself an onboard charger. It's going to save you a lot of headaches. Oh, he woke up. Might be bigger than we thought. Actually, I couldn't ask you to get those forceps for you, but I forgot them again. Fun, eh? Oh, yeah, he's really pulling yeah. out. Try to keep your rod, like, braced tight. I know he's heavy. And, uh, a lot of people actually frown upon carp as a sport fish, but you can see they're very worthy. Thank you very much. There we go. Let's get him in. We got, oh, there we go. I got him. Perfect. I'm just going to unhook him right here and okay. let him go. Cool. So nice seeing him swim away like that. There we go. I tell you guys, I haven't had a break here today. <laughs> I'm, uh, this thing's just taking line on me here. I've had, every time I go to sit down, we get a fish on. <laughs> We've got lunch sitting up there and uh, I don't think we're going to get to eat today. This sure beats sitting in the office, I bet, eh? Oh, certainly does. Both of you girls, uh, well, you spend some time on the road, right? But uh, you spend a lot of time in the office. Too much time in the office. Yeah. Could be out doing this every day, it'd be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> do you find there's a lot of, uh, or there's women that do a lot of fishing, or is it more just that they uh, go along with? Yeah, you know what? It's interesting you say that because last year we noticed we were starting to get a lot more female viewers emailing us through our message board. And uh, I definitely invite you to do the same thing if there's something you like or if there's some constructive criticism you have. We have a message board on the website. Feel free to go there and put up your uh, comments and, uh, you know, post your fish pictures up there. You might just win a prize. Who's up next? I am. It's got to be you. Lisa, the 30-pound queen. Well, I'll tell you Laura. what. Those... Oh, that's right. See, I did it again. And I gave them the different colored hats and I still got it wrong. That's all right. Everyone else does the same yeah. thing. Is that a nice to fish? It's a big one. All these people that were uh, making fun of you for going carp fishing and you at home too, just get out there, give it a try. It's an absolute blast. You two will vouch for that, right? Exactly. Oh, there he goes. As far as baits today, we're using boilies. They're actually freshly made and ordered from the States. Tutti Frutti has been by far the most productive today. We're we fishing those on a hair rig about uh, 10, 10 inches in length. Gonna need a bait needle to get those onto your hair rig. Right below a method feeder, which we're putting on a method feeder mix. As far as uh, rods go, we're using 12 foot, two and a half pound test curve rods. 
We've got a large bait runner reel here, sported up with 30 pound test braid. Uh, very important to have the bait runner, especially when you're fishing in the rod pod that we're using. And uh, you can see that these fish have a lot of power here. You need that bait runner system so that when you, when you leave the rods unattended in the uh, rod pod, it's not gonna pull it right out into the lake for you. The rod pod we're using is a European style pod. It's got fully adjustable legs. We're using three electronic digital bite alarms. They've got a volume control and a tone control on there so that you can set the tones differently to identify which rod's going off. We're also using swingers behind those. What they allow us to do is if the fish comes towards us, the swinger will drop. If the fish swims away from us, then the swinger will come upwards. You always want to make sure you've got a waistling with you, a good scale, and uh, a good landing net like the one we're using here. You're going to want to make sure you've got a good pair of forceps with you to get the hooks out. An unhooking net is uh, key if you're fishing in uh, places where there's rock and stone like we are today. That's another nice one. Wow, we've got to weigh that. Pre-baiting is the key to the success of landing these fish. You've got to keep these fish feeding in the area. Uh, we've been using maize, uh, high protein trout pellets. And what that'll do is it'll set up a sort of a field along the, like a grazing field almost for the carp out in the channel here. Make sure you've got a good bait catapult. Shoot a few boilies out around your hook baits like we did out by the market here. They'll come in and start feeding on the boilies and eventually pick up your hook bait. And then you're going to hook into a beauty like this. Kawatha carp. Eh, who the fun is? Urban Outdoor Adventures. Teaching anglers and outdoor enthusiasts when, where, and how. Hosted by Sean Ricard. Don't forget to log on to our website and post your fishing, camping, and outdoor pictures on the CPR section of our message board. If your picture is chosen as a runner-up, you could receive a brand new digital camera. Post your pictures today. You might just be our next winner. Perfect. The twins get a double header, eh? <laughs> All right. Fishing in the Coathas. You got to give it a try. All right. Okay. Look at him. Just... All right. Get him in. Oh, yeah. He's a nice fish, too. There we go. Perfect. Two in the net. Double header with uh, two of the most beautiful girls I know. <laughs> and, uh, well, thank you. What more could you ask for? You shouldn't talk about the fish like that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's... Uh, that's Lisa's. Yeah, getting you mixed up again, see? <laughs> twins for the twins. Yours, I think yours might be a little bigger, I don't know. I think that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the luckiest man in the world or what? <laughs> Alright, let's let him go. Hi, buddy. Perfect. Alright, girls. Slime me. Alright. I want to thank you for coming on the show. We're going to keep fishing. Unfortunately, we're out of time right now. But uh, I want to thank Laura and Lisa for coming on the show. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, you enjoyed yourself? I had a great day. Yes, it's thank you very much. Lots of fish. You've got to get up here in the Coatas. We're on Kachawanuka Lake. Go to our website for more information. I'm Sean Rickard. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for yet another Urban Outdoor Adventure. Urban Outdoor Adventures. Sponsored by Lakeport. Great beer, fair prices. Nikon Canada. Simply better pictures. Pure energy the number one rechargeable battery in Canada. What the hell happened? I had to cut it. The other line was so tangled around it, I couldn't get it untangled, and then it wouldn't go through the eye. I had to <laughs> cut it off. <laughs> you watch a muscular slam as it's coming in. <laughs>